This episode is brought to you by Our Insurance Guy, a local family-owned insurance agency. Eric and his wife Christina are passionate about focusing on the needs of homeowners, farmers, and business owners in the London region. Focusing on service, putting empathy and trust back into insurance, contact Eric and Christina at OurInsuranceGuy.ca for your no-obligation quote today. Alrighty, Peter, as you can see, good friend of mine. I know you, you, this is one of those scenarios where sometimes on the show we have friends of Pete, we have friends of mine, and then at the end they become friends of everybody. Um, yeah. I'm still not sure exactly why Chris Merchant doesn't say no to me anymore, but uh, you know, he, he's a hell of a guy and we love him. So Merch, uh, good to see you. I know it's uh, you're, you're no longer Western. Can you'll always be Western Canadian, but a whole lot of different situation right now as opposed to Western Canada. Canada, you're over in Spain. How's it going, man? It's great. Uh, I'm loving. I'm loving every second of Spain. It's just. Uh, it's so different over here. The culture. The. Uh, just all the opportunities that I'm getting are are, kind of something that I thought were kind of distant futures in my life, and and I'm getting to experience them now. And uh, unfortunately, I can't travel at all, which was definitely on my bucket list. But. Um, Maybe once things open up and but I'm getting to, to see a lot of Madrid, which is such a beautiful city and uh, I'm getting to play the game I love. So I have no complaints whatsoever. Chris, is it is it three down or four down football? I, I believe it's, four, it's, it's four down. It's LNFA is what the league is called, is it not? Yes, sir. Yes, L sir. L and I'm not going to try to pronounce it because. No, 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 no. My <laughs> Spanish isn't up to par. Either. We tried to figure it out before, but I, no, I'm not even going to try yeah. and brutalize that. because uh, How many it. teams are in it? Uh, there are. Ooh, that's a good question, too. There's, I believe, eight teams. Uh, okay. Eight or nine teams. And there's two different conferences. So there's the Western and the Eastern Conference. Okay. Just like uh, the NFL. Yep. Yep. So we're in the Western conference and how it works this year. We have eight games, um, six of which are all against conference uh, teams. And then two of which are against one other team in the other conference. Uh, and this year, our crossover ended up being uh, the former powerhouse, which is mm -hmm. called Bat the Badalona Drax. Uh, they had a 44 game win streak coming into the season until we beat them in the first game uh, or the second game. So, yeah, uh, and we play them again next weekend. So uh, not this weekend coming up, but the next one. So right, right. How, well, how how is the game accepted by fans? I, 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 is it a popular sport? I wouldn't say it's popular. Um, I, I think it's gaining popularity. I think that's one of their goals is to continue to build the sport in Spain. Um, in Europe, I would say Spain is still one of the least developed. Uh, football communities. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say I, I, Germany, Austria, Poland, these, these countries are really starting to, to gain popularity in the sport, but Spain is still a little bit behind. Uh, Las Rotas is really doing their best to uh, gain funding and, and support from people so that they can really, uh, really take their, their organization to the next level. Uh, and hopefully with that comes uh, more support from fans and, and more support for the game of football here in Spain. So. And is it called football? Because I think of Spanish soccer as, as uh, we would call it soccer, but do they call it soccer or football? Everybody has a different name for it. It's kind of funny when, when you get here, when you say American football, people are like, oh, rugby. And we're like, no, not rugby, um, American football. Uh, so some people call it rugby. Some people call it football if, if you actually are within the, the game of American football here. And then a lot of people will just call it American football. So, right. uh, Chris, you, 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 I know, I know. For I always love going back to the the, the stories angle of uh, you know. And I, I had a little fun the other week because I, I don't know if it was you or if it was one of the family members posted a little little highlight reel there. Uh, and I, I just all I commented was CM twelve doing CM twelve things. <laughs> um, was twelve just available, or just everywhere you go, you just uh, that's kind of somewhere in the, a piece of paper that twelve must carry on. Well, it's it's definitely. Uh, I'm hoping everywhere I go, twelve is available. I mean, uh, my next team coming up here, uh, which I still haven't really gotten. Um, I'm not allowed if I'm. I don't think I'm allowed to just say it yet because they haven't come out with it yet so i'm going to keep it on the down low you'll it'll the news will be coming out in the next couple of days i better not find out via social media post again let me tell you that much <laughs> right now i got you i got you um 
But no, uh, 12 is definitely, it's something that's very special to me. I mean, it's a number that I've worn for a long time and had a lot of success in. So, uh, and, and a lot of my, um, a lot of the quarterbacks that I look up to, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, uh, those are the guys that, that wear it. And, and I just like to continue that legacy, hopefully, of, of good quarterbacks wearing that number. So. I know when you said you wanted to go, you know, obviously the, the you're, you're at Western. We'll we'll talk a bit about the history sort of thing a little bit here in a bit. But, um, you know, when you're at Western, you're looking, you a couple CFL camps and that kind of thing. Uh, you didn't ever pout. You didn't get upset. I'm sure there's points where it gets a little upset. You're looking to go to some CFL camps and those sort of things. But you always welcome things with open arms sort of thing, especially when initially you were, uh, there was potential to go to uh, fin- fin- Finland, right? was initially the first stop. Obviously, COVID, like everything, is throwing everything into whack. Um, you know, opportunity comes in Spain sort of thing. I know when you said initially but the Finland idea was kind of a let me go see the world, have an opportunity to play the game, and potentially make an impact and uh, maybe come back later on down the line. Is that kind of still the the, the mentality sort of thing? Because obviously there's so much talk of what will the CFL be, this whole CFL, XFL, all that kind of talk sort of thing? Yeah, uh, that's so interesting. Um, all of the stuff going on right now, and, and that's a whole nother conversation. But no, I, again, it, it's very interesting time in the world, and, and it's, it's given me an opportunity to um, – when when football is not going on anywhere else in the world other than the United States, it's given me an opportunity to come over here and continue to play the game I love while a lot of people don't have that opportunity. So not only is it something that I was going to do, but it, it ended up just working out in my favor, which is even better. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's no point in dwelling on what could have been or, or in my opinion, what should have been. Uh, it's, it's about... For the record, that's a lot of people's opinion of what should have been. Uh, just just yeah. appreciate say, it. That out. <laughs> appreciate that. But no, it's 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 about um, just handling adversity and and moving on and um, and taking that like, using the chip that I have on my shoulder to c- continue to uh, bring success wherever I go because that's all I can do. I I can control the things that I can control, and I can't control what other people think of me. And in this case, it's what the CFL scouts think of me. So. It is what it is. Well, you, you've got a, 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 a much better situation than a man named Jamie Bone, who was a, a Mustang quarterback back in the day. And uh, he, yes, he, sir. Had, he had a tryout with the Dallas Cowboys for three months. That's how good he was. And they said the only reason he didn't make it was because of a, the, the guy he was opposed to was a little taller. He, he was right. Three inches taller. But Jamie didn't have the European opportunity that you have. Uh, and those uh, in, of, of your era, he just once the CFL shut him. Hell, he went to a CFL camp. And they didn't yeah. use the playbook. They didn't no, use the playbook. He had, use, he had to use the, the playbook of another of a teammate. That that, that uh, that's what they thought of him. His chances of making the team, and he was the best quarterback in the land on on the collegiate level. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I would, and I wish I could say that things have changed a lot, but they haven't. Um, my my CFL experience is very similar, to be honest. It's uh, when I was in Montreal, they gave me a playbook, so that was good. But uh, they had me watch the entire camp, even though they brought me in to to compete compete for a spot. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't get. I don't think I got a single Skelly rep, or maybe one or two, the entire camp over two weeks. Uh, like almost no team reps until until we had a team scrimmage and then they threw me into the scrimmage with like almost no practice. I was prepared. I, I took it as an opportunity. Again, and it was an opportunity. I prepared in the playbook like I was going to be playing. So uh, I went in. I I threw. I drove the field, threw a touchdown. Then I threw a two point conversion. I was the only quarterback that day to throw a touchdown um, in the scrimmage. Uh, and then ne- the next week we had a preparation for our, our exhibition game against the Toronto Argonauts mm. and it went back to not getting any reps in practice and just watching. And, um, and again, I was learning a lot from, from the guys that, uh, were getting those reps because I, I was taking the mental reps and doing my best. Uh, but then I got told I was suiting up for the Toronto game and I'm very, very happy that they, they put me in, they put me in at the end of the game for two drives. Um, Again, I thought I played well. I, I went 0 for 2, but one of them was a drop, and the other one was a comeback that the guy just ran five yards too deep. So the things that are my control, again, uh, I did what I could do, and and uh, and then they sent me home and, and told me they'd probably bring me back next year, and then 
they fired their GM and Machocha decided to go with uh, Sanagra instead. So, I mean, that's football. That's what happens in the game. But unfortunately, the CFL, like you said, it, it hasn't changed very much in terms of getting Canadian Canadian uh, quarterbacks a chance. So, Do you still have CFL aspirations or, or, uh, or are you going to stay in great, Europe? That's a great question. Uh, it depends on kind of what happens in the, obviously the next year or two with the CFL. And um, I mean, if they join with the XFL, that'll probably mean even less opportunities for Canadian quarterbacks. Um, and it, I'm fortunate because uh, I want to get American film because my goal, to be honest, is to get to the XFL, uh, with this new, if the XFL does, I think it's under great management with the rock. I think where, wherever he goes, he touches, he turns into money. So, uh, that's the good thing. And he's passionate about football. So I think the XFL is going to do really well. It's just a matter of when are they going to start it up with COVID and everything like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about COVID over there? Are you restricted? Do you have to go it through a, a 12 day or a 14 day of period? To when you move? No, no. Luckily uh, when I flew out here, I had to take a PCR test in Canada uh, 48 hours before I had to get the result 48 hours before my flight right. uh, and then got my flight and uh, showed the result once I got to Spain because everybody on the plane has to, to prove that. So obviously no one has COVID on the plane. Um, and uh, you land, you give them the test and they let you in as long as you can prove that you're either on a visa or in my case, the highest level of sport competition in the country. So mm -hmm. uh, it was very easy. And uh, now there's, there's a curfew of uh, 11 o'clock uh, and you've got to wear masks everywhere you go, whether it's inside or outside, but uh, other than that, everything's open with uh, a few restrictions, obviously, uh, to keep people safe. But no, I'm very fortunate that the country is pretty open other than I'm not allowed to leave Madrid either. I can't go travel just for the sake of traveling. So uh, I'm confined to the city limits of Madrid. Right. Uh, but but again, it's a great city with a lot to see. So I'm not complaining at all. Uh, now, the, the one story you, you have to tell is the fact of when you land in Spain. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody <laughs> thinks Spain, they think nice warm weather, they think, what is what does Chris Merchant bring along with him? That's Good crazy. old Western Canada. <laughs> yeah, I packed the snow up with me, I guess, because I flew into a snowstorm, which ended up turning into the biggest snowstorm they've had in over 50 years. So <laughs> uh, it shut down the city for like, two weeks and they're still doing reparations in like the parks and stuff on the trees that it took down because uh, wow. it was just a massive storm yeah so the biggest wow. part i'm like five minutes from uh a park de retiro it's called so it's like the central park of madrid yeah. and uh it's been they've had to close down the entire central part of the park because the trees have taken so long to clean up and, and fix so <laughs> it has been well, quite I something if you don't get snow at all ever how do you deal with it you know how exactly you know, we exactly. don't have to deal with it over here but especially where you're from but, but uh, uh it, it would be a nightmare it, it yeah. really would be for those in control it would be a nightmare how do we get rid of this stuff exactly yeah no and then it was it was funny because then texas got hit with that storm too and texas uh because I don't know what all the story is, but I think the corporations own all the energy, the big corporations and, and the infrastructure wasn't there. So it shut down the whole, yeah. uh, at yeah. least there was multiple major cities that got shut down. And so, I mean, when you're not prepared for it, you're not prepared for it. You're right. Exactly. So. exactly. Now, for you, Chris, I, I, I got to in full disclosure to those who don't know, I used to be the sports information guy for the Mustang. So obviously I got to spend, uh, I still kind of say, I don't know if anybody has looked at and or edited as many photos of Chris Merchant than I have. <laughs> um, I know there's some people that work before me, so they may have, but um, you know, when, when I was there, I got the, I got the enjoyment of working with the, with student athletes such as yourself. Uh, I know how much prep time, how much energy, how much just sheer time you put into planning on a week to week basis for games, even an off season. It wasn't like, you know, the, the end of you know, November happened and you kind of, you know, put your feet up and said, you know, we'll, we'll see what, uh, what things look like again next yeah. August. Um, what was that period of time like between obviously finishing up with the Mustangs and then, you know, obviously the finishing the education part, but then all of a sudden you had plans. You're I'm here. Now I got to go right to here. And, you know, that, that period of time for 
you know, not having competition, not having games sort of thing. How, how crazy was that for you sort of thing? Or were you just in the backyard throwing as many balls as you could just to keep yourself kind of mentally on game kind of thing? Yeah, there was a little bit of that. It was, it was the, it was a really, really tough time in my life. Um, because not only was I coming off foot surgery and there was a lot of uncertainty with that, um, there was just that uncertainty of when COVID was going to, uh, allow me to play again. Uh, and if I wanted to wait that long to kind of get my life started too, because I put, I postponed a lot of, a lot of things in my life, like, um, searching for, for a real job, I guess you would say. Um, don't, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No. Um, so th- there was just so much uncertainty and, and it was difficult because, I was definitely training and I, I was training hard for, for my opportunity, but there was just that always that block in the back of my mind that was kind of there and just saying, well, is this, is this what you want to do? Is this the right time? Maybe is, maybe is this the world telling you maybe you should move on and stuff like that. So uh, luckily I kept, I kept pushing through it and um, definitely had some days where I, I just chilled out and, and, <laughs> and even weeks where I just chilled out and then kind of got back into it. And there were swings of working hard and then not working hard, but uh, thank God I'm back in the full swing of things. And uh, again, it's, it's what I live to do right now. So I love it. And it's, it's great being a pro. I mean, you just get to work out and um, I'm learning Spanish and I just started a new business opportunity and just on my own time. So it's cool. I, I love it. You you how, having how many, sixteen things at once is it, it just does not surprise me whatsoever. <laughs> how many yeah, Spanish kids have taken up the game? Do you have a lot of Spanish kids on your team? Yeah, so the in in the European leagues, how it works is uh, the majority of the teams are made up of local uh, local uh, players. So in Spain, it's a lot of the, there's two teams in Madrid. There's one on the west side and one on the east side. So we're the one on the west side. So a lot of the the kids that um, the, it's the other Madrid team is the one that we had the shootout with like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So um, the, obviously there's a lot of talent in Madrid. Uh, again, the development is is still not where it needs to be. They need to get the coaching uh, mm-hmm. a little up, but it's constantly improving. They just need more players to come in. And um, again, we brought four division or three division one players and me. I like to consider myself division one too. Uh, you are, don't worry. But, we, we don't, uh, we yeah, consider. Yeah, yeah. You are, you're up. <laughs> um, so they brought four division one guys in there. They're very committed to, to bring in that knowledge of the game in and help the coaches and help the organizations. Uh, but they are mostly Spanish kids. So it's just a matter of getting that getting the development to the point where it needs to be. So how, how good are they? How good are the Spanish players? It ranges. So there are a couple that could definitely play university ball in Canada. Um, and then there's a lot that are kind of like high school level uh, players. Um, and then again, then you get the, the players, every team brings in imports. They get to choose how many imports they want to bring in. But uh, we brought in not only the four of us. So the three other division one players, but we we also bring in just for games uh, two European imports from uh, okay. one from France and one from well he's actually from Guatemala but he's played in the GFL one uh, which is the best league in Germany and probably the best league in in Europe so mm-hmm. luckily I have the honor to play with a lot of talent around me which is great right now so while those other kids develop um, and and kind of learn from us yeah. uh, I get to play with a lot of talent around me which is uh, it's been a great opportunity. How long, how long is the year kind of thing? Because as you mentioned, uh, and I know I've talked to, to guys who have played, you know, international basketball sort of thing. And, you know, they'll, they'll three, four months in, in Greece, then they'll go to another spot for a three, four more months sort of thing. Uh, is it kind of a similar situation on the football front that uh, I'm sure, you know, pick and choose the areas kind of thing? Uh, uh, you know, I know you said you can't do much traveling right now, but uh, I know that was kind of part of the, the thought process there. Let, let me go play some football, be a pro and maybe see the world while I'm at it. Yeah, exactly. That was definitely part of my decision to come over here. It's just, it's such a great opportunity that a lot of people don't get. I mean, I'm, I'm in Europe for, I'm getting paid to be in Europe, which is sweet. Uh, but no, uh, the season ranges. I mean, every, every league has its own season and they're all over the place right now because of COVID. But, uh, 
Spain is kind of one of the earliest. So Spain's January through our season ends in mid-May this year. Uh, and I don't think it usually goes that late because what they did is they spaced all the games two weeks apart so that uh, if there was a case of COVID, it wouldn't disrupt too much. So uh, luckily we've been able to play every game and we get tested before every game to make sure everyone's safe and we're not going to a game with um, risks. But then there's uh, seasons after, and, and unfortunately, some of the seasons overlap. Uh, the GFL 1 season is coming up, I think, in early or mid-April. So I think it's coming up pretty soon, and uh, that's when their preseason starts. And unfortunately, I, I had an opportunity with the GFL 1 team, but because of the timing of our season, uh, it didn't work out. Uh, but then there's other teams that start in May. There's other teams that start in June. So um every season is kind of a little different. It's just whenever they decide to go. Uh, and it, obviously the climate pay, plays a, a part to it as well. So um, the, the colder countries up in the North want to start a little bit later so that they get those summer months to, to play. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, going uh, will back. you eventually move on uh, to, to the GFL or, or some, some other uh, league like that? This kid doesn't sit still for too long there. Yeah. Don't worry. He's going somewhere. We know that for sure. If not, yeah. well, Pete Merchant's got to keep uh, keep his social content up somehow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But no, definitely. That's if, if I decide to stay in Europe, the best league is my goal. So either that's the GFL or there's a brand new league that they've uh, just created, which is called the EF, uh, ELF, the European League of Football or something like that. Okay. And uh, that consists of actually it's, it's, they're trying to restart NFL Europe basically. Um, okay. So it's uh, they've brought a bunch of ex NFL players that are European, but played in the NFL uh, and they're starting to sign uh, those guys. So they're, very talented teams, uh, more talented. And there's a lot more money involved in that because it's like private sponsorships and TV sponsorships. And so they're really trying to, that's going to be the biggest league in Europe. I think in the next few years, mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see if they go this year because of COVID they've obviously got to cross borders and stuff like that. So there's, there's multiple teams in Germany, a team in Spain, a team in Poland. So there's at least three countries involved, maybe more. So yeah. it'll be interesting. Um, yeah. But those are definitely, Definitely my goals. The yeah. issue is there's still a stigma around Canadian quarterbacks here. It's crazy. I I, I don't know where. Yeah, where when can you, kid? <laughs> no, man. I don't know where it comes from, but you, you tell people that you're Canadian. It's like, oh, we've got a D3 kid coming from the U.S. It's like a D3 kid is going to be my backup to my backup in Canada. So there's a, there are great D3 kids. Don't get me wrong. You'll get a good quarterback every once in a while. But in terms of – there's just this stigma where it's like, oh, they come from the U.S. They're better than us, which is not true. Yeah. And so it's been very frustrating because there are multiple teams that have told me, uh, I mean, the, the team in Barcelona, I believe, just signed a, a quarterback over me, who's a European quarterback who I've been told is nowhere close to where I am. So uh, and I, I don't like to brag about myself. I don't. It's just I'm getting to a point. Well, that where was, I'm a that little, was my job. <laughs> I'm a, I'm just a little fed up with the stigma uh, involved around Canadian quarterbacks and Canadian players in general because we can play and we've proved it. So, how, how much do you, you foresee the situation, Chris? As you know, a scenario where you go over, you play in Spain, you, you obviously want to go and, and try out some other areas too. Um, you know, between the 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 connection that you had with the guys you played with at Western. Um, obviously you were always very, very, you know, uh, welcoming of uh, interaction with alumni and that kind of thing. And the, the, the recruit classes every year sort of thing. Um, how much do you kind of foresee this as kind of almost like an advocacy thing on, on your part to kind of say to guys, there's an opportunity here beyond maybe the, you know, sometimes narrow scope of some guys of saying, I'm going to go play for the Mustangs and then I'm hoping to get in the CFL draft and hopefully that's my my route kind of thing. How much do you kind of foresee this a situation where you know you're you know you you, you win a Vanier, you, you got you got a Heck Crichton. There's nothing in this kind of scope that you didn't get, um, which is well deserved. So you, you kind of utilize that as kind of saying you know you don't like bragging for yourself, but like looking out to guys and saying hey, you can play in Spain, you can play here, you can play here, and it's great football, and you can kind of be a pro. Yeah, that's definitely one of the reasons that um, – or maybe not one of the reasons, but one of the things that's a benefit because I do want to be a quote-unquote trailblazer for the next generation. 
and and for me, there were guys like Coach Snyder who were trailblazers before me, uh, guys who told me about Europe and um, they got to experience that and played in Germany. And uh, I've met people that played all over Europe and love their experience. Um, so everywhere I go and I meet people that talk about their experience in Europe, they say nothing but good things. So I just want to I, I wanted to experience that. And so far, I completely agree with them. It's it's a great experience. Um, it's it, you, you learn a lot about yourself because you have to it's challenging to be in a new culture, especially with a new language uh, in certain parts of Europe. Um, English is spoken a lot, but in Spain, there's a, that's, it's a lot of Spanish as well. So I'm doing my best to learn the language. And, and if I know, that's the great thing. If I know Spanish and English, I can go to 90% of the world and, and communicate with people. Uh, yes. So if I want to go to, not only do I get to come to Europe and Spain, but if I want to go to travel to South America, now I could do that whenever I want mm -hmm. and actually communicate with the people and, and they'll gain a respect for you because you can communicate with them. So it just opens up all these opportunities outside of football as well, which is, I think, the most important thing because, again, like everybody says, football ends at some point. So you need to be ready for the next part of your life. Uh, let me ask you a question about uh, salaries. Do you, do you earn a, a decent salary? I'm not asking you how much. and That's none yep. of my business. But uh, is it a living wage, so to speak? Yeah, so I wouldn't say the salary is – crazy but um the all the benefits kind of make up for that so i mean in the cfl you're making your salary but you're paying for your food you're paying for your house you're paying for the taxes you're paying for you're paying for everything so yeah. it's difficult you're because you look at their wage and it seems like okay it's an okay wage for half the year but by the time you get taxed on that especially in like quebec where you're getting taxed half your salary and then you've got to pay for your housing in montreal and all of that yeah. Whereas here they pay for your, I mean, depending on your contract, but they'll pay for your flights, your housing, sometimes your food, your transportation. Um, a lot of your, like, I needed to get a COVID test. They, they were fortunate, fortunate enough to, to get that in my contract. So again, if you negotiate and, and every team is different because they, certain teams can't always offer all of that, but it is definitely enough to live on. Um, and, and, I think his audio cut out there. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he's got he's got the AirPods going, so the uh, the AirPods die, and then yeah, uh... the AirPods die. My bad. Can you hear me? <laughs> we got you. We got you. Oh, my bad. Yeah, it just <laughs> muted me. I hey, that's technology for you. We're not even going to edit that out. We're just going to be like, hey, that's the way oh, it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. Yeah, um, where did you lose me? I mean, it it's you're yeah, saying... you're not going to be able to save forever, but uh, it it's enough to enjoy your experience and and. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's what it's all about uh, while you're over here. How, how how strange was it? You mentioned three three down and four down. You you, you ran years with a three down game um, where you you and G Marsh and uh, and you know a few different guys on the offensive side of things uh, running that three down system. Did it take a while to get used to the fact that uh, you know things weren't to uh, weren't weren't a little different sort of thing, or did it uh, or is you know I know you've been playing football since you know you were you know. Yeah, as much as you can pick up a ball. So it's just kind of a, well, we'll just adjust. Yeah, I was fortunate because I trained for the American game. Obviously, when I went down to Buffalo and, and out of high school, I was training a lot for the American game. In my opinion, it's easier to transition from the Canadian game to the American game than it is to transition back from the American game to the Canadian game, mm -hmm. which is why it's always frustrating for me that they take American quarterbacks because a lot of them can't even read a Canadian defense. So, um <laughs> It's 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 much easier, in my opinion, to read American defenses because your two high safeties are are a lot easier than basically you got three safeties with the two halfbacks and and a, and a free safety in Canada. Um, you can do a lot more in Canada in terms of match coverage and stuff like that. So it's it's very confusing. It can be to a lot of players, whereas in in the U.S. there's match coverage, but it, it's basically cover four, cover two, cover three. It's just very basics for somebody who understands the game of football, um, especially when you're playing against teams that are, are kind of basic. And yeah, so I mean, for me, the transition wasn't too bad. It's more the throws that you need to get used to. Like a fade ball is a little bit different because the diameters of the field are different in Canada and the U.S. So yeah. 
there's small differences, but you get used to it. If, if you can throw a football, you can throw a football at the end of the day. <laughs> Uh, you've had some time to look back. I know we talked kind of shortly after the end of the, the your, your final seasons there sort of thing. I know you were still on the men's. Or, um, I know at the time we kind of said, you know, had it really set in kind of the um, kind of your body of work and your impact on, on that Mustangs program, uh, you know, to finish out with the, with the heck and everything of like that. And I know you said at the time you kind of said it, it'll take maybe a little bit of time before I kind of, you know, have a little bit of nostalgia effect to, to it sort of thing. Has it, has it set in how, uh, you know, kind of how well and how kind of impressive that kind of time that you were in purple and white uh, had on the program sort of thing. Cause now uh, I, I think if I recall correctly, there may have been talk of potentially getting a, getting a wall graphic redone. Cause now there's a new member to that heck Crichton group sort of thing. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> i'll design it if i have to and i don't work there yeah. anymore <laughs> no but uh yeah i mean there's i miss it I, I definitely miss it i don't i wouldn't say i miss the school aspect of it but i i miss being around coach marshall and i miss being around people that love the game as much as i do um and and i do get to be around that here it's just different because it's a different culture i mean yeah. spanish football it's more of a as it's I mean, Western was a family, but there was so much competition. We were always, we, we just wanted to win all the time. And, and we were always competing and we knew that there was an, another guy right behind us. Whereas here, it's more about the development and just having fun. And um, it is, it's professional for us, but for the other guys, they just want to play football. So it's more like, a, I don't, it's better than high school football but it's more like a high school feel almost kind of. Um, so it's been a transition backwards in terms of mindset for me. Uh, so that makes me miss it even miss Western even more because yeah. you know how competitive I am. I, I love that part of the game. It's just who I am. I'm probably the most competitive person people uh, will ever meet, uh, which can be a bad thing sometimes, but um, no, nah, I miss it. It's definitely wearing that purple and white and, and going out and competing with, with my brothers every weekend. Uh, and, and having so much success was – was it, it's great memories for me. So I'll continue to, to look back on those with, with very fond uh, memories. Yeah. You, you and hundreds of other guys, Chris, uh, because I've covered that team uh, I, not so much now, but from mm -hmm. Metris to Marshall, Johnny Metris was a, a yes, sir. Legend, legendary head coach, and John was Absolutely. a good friend of mine. Uh, but uh, all the guys say the same thing that you've said. It was nice to be part of that family. 100%. And it's great that, I mean, I haven't experienced it fully yet because of, it's been difficult to, to connect with people during COVID. Um, but I'm excited to kind of see what that alumni is like and, and, and see how connected everybody is because I've been to those wall of champions dinners and uh, I've seen people inducted and how much it means to them. And, Hopefully one day I'll, I'll be there up there and uh, and get to share that um, that sense of emotion with them. So uh, I look forward to that day and, um, and 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 to the days to come just to get to know some of the alumni a little bit better. Sure. What, uh, what what's the you know you said the the plan right now? You're, you're playing in Spain. You're going to the next where whatever that may be. Um, but uh, you know it's a scenario. You said the plan you'd like to get to the XFL that kind of thing. Um, you know, is this kind of like, I know you're, you're a plan guy, you don't, you don't just fly by the seat of the pants sort of thing. That's uh, you know, there's a, I want to get here by this point. I want to get here by this point, And then I want to do this sort of thing. Um, you know, what, what is on that kind of bucket list to kind of going forward? Ooh, that's a good question. It's yeah. I'm a very, you know, I'm a very goal oriented person. Uh, like you said, um, I've had to, I don't want to say change that, but I've had to, take a step back and be more malleable with my goals, I would say, because of the situation. Um, and uh, be, I'd be a little bit easier on myself because it's been, it's been harder to achieve some of the goals that I want uh, just based on time and uh, an opportunity right now. Um, I, I don't really have a timeline for those goals, but I just want to play the best football that I can play. Wherever that is, if, if I get an opportunity to come back into North America and, and play at a high level, that's definitely my goal um, because I do want to continue to prove people wrong about me. Uh, at this point it is proving people wrong. It's not just proving myself. Right. Um, so 
that's definitely the goal. Wherever that takes me, I'm not sure. I don't know how long it'll take or what the timeline is like, but um, hopefully within the next three years is kind of the goal. Um, and, and that'll give me a great opportunity to see if a bunch of different places in Europe, um, hopefully uh, even more when things open up and then I'll just take it from there. What, what the, getting back to, to the Spanish, uh, the LMFA, what, what is the, uh, is there a trophy? Like if we have the Vanier Cup, as you're well aware, and the Grey Cup, and, and of course there's the Super Bowl. Do they have a, a trophy at the end of the season? They definitely have a trophy. I, I couldn't tell you what it's called. It's probably another uh, name that I can pronounce. But, um, yeah, they, and they whoever wins the championship gets rings. And then uh, how it works is that if you win the championship that year, the next year you become uh, eligible. You become the team to go play in, like, the European Cup, I, yep. I believe, which is, like, all the, the champions mm -hmm. play each other. And unfortunately, Spain has not had success in the past because, again, other countries are just a little more developed in the game and right. um, a little bit bigger and better players, I would say. But again, their goal is to get to that point where where they can compete for that championship as well, not just in Spain. And that's why we where we were brought in is to to kind of help the players see that this is the level you might need to be be at in order to achieve that goal. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, is, is coaching uh, football down the line somewhere still in that, that brain of yours? Because uh, the amount of times I saw you and G-Marsh having uh, excessive conversations, not only on game planning, but uh, sometimes even even Greg would say to me, he goes, Chris would Chris would call a shot because Chris studied the playbook and studied hey. so much that you were just kind of a – you were you were an extra coach out there, kind of thing. I got to well, think Mar at some point that's got to be somewhere in the mentality. Marshall was a player. He was yeah. a player. Yeah. Kind of no, good exactly. one. I mean, in my opinion, the best coaches are are those that played uh, because yeah. you understand the emotional yeah. side of the game. You you understand what those players are going through on the field. So exactly. For me, coaching has always been an option. I mean, I have to experience at that level to understand if that's something that I want to do in the long term and. And that might be another thing that, uh, as an announcement, might be coming up soon. Um, again, I can't say where or, or with what. Um, again, I'm always purple and white at heart, but uh, he's, getting, he's, getting, he's getting close. We're trying to – it's it's somewhere like in the middle of his tongue right yeah, now. Yeah, I hope people don't uh, kind of throw a fit because, again, I'm purple and white through and through, but uh, – when an opportunity comes, you got to jump on it. So exactly. um, I have a feeling I know what colors it is. <laughs> you go where the opportunity is. Yeah, no, you're probably thinking of a different school, but no. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. All right, I was going to say. I was, no, 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 just just checking. Yeah, no, but, uh, again, it's a, it's a great opportunity for me to work with uh, someone I respect immensely. So um, if that happens and if that comes to fruition, then I think it'll be great. Um and I believe it'll allow me to coach during the off season, my off season, uh, while I'm not in Europe, and then um, come over and play at least at least another year. Um, and then if I really enjoy coaching, then maybe I do hang it up and I go into coaching. But uh, again, I, I got a few more years left in the tank. I feel great. My foot feels great. I, I mean, I hurdled someone last game, so uh, for the first time in my career, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. I, I feel good. I get to work out um, on my own time and, and do that. And I'm not stressed. So my body feels great. And I think I can just keep going. So well, you, keep it up. Keep you've it done up. A, you've done a lot of work. I know in the kind of the in-between time, helping out kids, doing some clinics and that kind of thing. Even when you're, uh, you know, with the Mustangs, you know, summer camps and stuff like that, you'd, you'd help them out sort of thing. Um, you know, what is it, to, you know, how much is that enjoyable to help out the kind of the future of the game kind of thing? That's very enjoyable. Uh, whenever you, uh, football to me again is is such a large part of my life, and and one of the things that I want to give back is uh, when I grew up there, the coaching was it was good, but in Canada it's still developing. It's it's not where it is in the states. We don't have the facilities, we don't have the coaching, and we don't have the, um, I would say, just in overall infrastructure to, to be to be as successful as those programs are in the United States. And obviously it comes down to money um, at the end yep. of the day. Um, but uh, we can start somewhere with better coaching as well. So for me to give back to kids and, and, and use the information that I was 
I traveled down to the U S and, and learned from coaches and, and traveled to Vancouver and learned from a guy named Rob Williams, who I think is one of the best coaches uh, in Canada. So if you're a quarterback watching this, uh, look up my guy, Rob Williams, sport core performance. Um, he, I mean, those are the guys that are kind of trailblazing the next group of quarterbacks that are to come the next generation. So if I can help out with that, then I would love to, um, because if, if that makes the game better and gives a, a kid down the road an opportunity to, to yeah. crack the CFL and, and change that stigma, then let's do it. Yeah, let's do it indeed. Yeah. You mentioned you, you're you taking on a business opportunities. I would be remiss if I didn't give you an opportunity to talk about that a little bit. I, I would, I'd bug you about football for days, but uh, I know you're always trying to do a, a few things. And uh, what's, uh, what's the, the other foray? Is it inside of football or outside? No, it's outside of football. It's, um, it's a, a company that's given me an opportunity to, it's, uh, it's a multi-level marketing company. So again, it's, it's on my own time. It's whenever I have the time and, and basically I'm, I'm paying for courses to learn how to trade on the foreign exchange market, as well as, as build a team that, uh, can do the same with me and, and we can work together to, again, just make income on your own time, uh, which I think is, there's a lot of bad stigma around it because everyone, Oh, it's a pyramid scheme. It's going to screw you over, blah, 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 blah. But I've had a great experience with it so far. Um, again, it just gives me the opportunity to, when I'm not playing football and I have no means of making an income, uh, it's a little riskier than working a nine to five. But at the same time, if I take the time to learn how it works and, and do that, just like anything that, that involves risk, uh, if you take the time to, to really make sure you know what you're doing, you can make a pretty profit on it. So uh, I'm really enjoying it. I think the opportunity is there to do something with it. And uh, I'm excited to, to take it somewhere in the future. So again, anyone watching this, they want to reach out to me and get involved. Uh, let's do it. Hey, how many millionaires started at the very bottom of their, uh, of their particular interest? Exactly. In area, you exactly. Know? You got to take risks to get rewards. So sure, that's, sure, that's sure you do. And at your age, I'll, go ahead and do it. Uh, I know, uh, I think back to uh, the, I believe it was the, the team banquet at the end of the, the year for uh, your, your final season with the Mustangs sort of thing. Uh, you're rocking that, that big, uh, that big 10 gallon Stetson hat from uh, showing off that Western Canadian. I'll, I'll find the picture. I'll, I'll, I'll edit it in just so everybody can see it. Um, you, you love the fact that you're from Western, you love the fact that you're from Western Canada. How much you miss in the, you, you're missing that, uh, that Alberta, you know, culture and then sunshine and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I definitely miss it. I I miss just normal life in Canada. <laughs> uh, when I got to go home, it was really nice to be with my parents and stuff. And, and when things were kind of open, it was nice to have a little bit of a, a sense of normalcy. But um, yeah, I love Western Canada. I love the people. I, I love the city of Calgary. Uh, I love the city of Calgary a little bit more when uh, the economy is not kind of in the tank right now. So it's a tough, it's a tough time for, for Western Canada. It's uh, there are a lot of people struggling in right now, but I definitely miss it. I miss my parents. I miss, but I also miss Eastern Canada because that's that was kind of home for me for a long time too. So each had its uh, each had its part. Uh, one is just what I grew up in. So I definitely, when I when I had the chance to to show my roots, I kind of took that opportunity. Uh, well, we know you won't tell us that next uh, avenue because uh, he, he's a smart he's a smart guy in general, but he's a smart businessman. He knows not to uh, cause it ruffle any feathers, mainly because no. I know I had, I had the chance to give him the gears a couple of times about wearing the wrong colored logos on his shoes <laughs> periodically. Um, yeah, there there not not so many times I had somebody say to me, "Did you just argue with Chris over what shoes he was wearing?" I was like. <laughs> Yeah, and my favorite was he was like, Ryan, I've got to literally go do warm up right now. And I'm like, Oh, you can't wear those shoes. Um, mainly because I didn't want to get yelled at. But yeah, no, no, needless to say, Pete, he wore whatever shoes he wanted. <laughs> I wore, yeah, whatever I could get on my feet. I wore. Exactly, exactly. The one thing I will say, Chris, and I know I've, I've asked you this question before and a couple of things, but I want to do it here as well. Um, you never kind of walked around with that attitude of, I'm the quarterback of the football team. And I know you took pride in the fact that you didn't have that. So sometimes again, I know you hate stereotypes, you know, the, the stereotype of Canadian quarterbacks, but uh, you also kind of fought back against that stereotype of being the quarterback of the football team at a university in Canada. Um, you know, what, what is it about that? that And why was that important to you? And why is it kind of important for kind of the people who come after you kind of thing? 
I think that's just how I was raised. Um, I definitely take pride in uh, kind of how I go about my my daily business and, and how I go about um, treating people. I mean, I, I like anybody, I make mistakes and, and I've done things that I'm not proud of. I mean, uh, it, in university, you make mistakes. You learn from them. Um, and, and that's the big thing for people, I think, is when I did make mistakes, I, I do learn from them. I, I do my best. So, um, no, I definitely want to break that stigma because there's this – the quarterback is supposed to be uh, a bad guy. It's supposed to – be cocky and um, just use his position to take advantage of people as a stereotype, I guess you would say. I have an opportunity in my position to uh, be a role model, to, um, again, help the next generation uh, be good people because there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad news in the world right now. I mean, there's, uh, you look at what's going on with Deshaun Watson and, and all of that crazy stuff down in the NFL and, it, it sucks because one, one, one mistake can really change your life. Um, so you have to, you have to be careful and, and, and go about your, you're under a microscope and, yeah. and I wasn't under a microscope as much as some of the guys in the U S uh, and, and stuff like that. But at Western, you, you're definitely under a microscope. And, and the more that you go about your business uh, the right way during those times will reflect later on in the future as well for, future opportunities. That's what my parents always tell me. Don't ever burn bridges with people, uh, no matter how you're feeling or, or how angry you are or, or whatever. Just take a deep breath, say, okay, maybe you disagree with them, but move on from the conversation and, uh, and maybe someday you can come to common terms on, on another uh, thing. So yeah, I mean, it's all over the place, but. As you say, you're living under a microscope and, and the, uh... The bigger you are, the bigger that microscope is, and, uh, and good good for you for, for taking the stance that you take. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You Usually on this podcast, I usually get our guests to tell a Pete James story. I know you don't have a whole lot of Pete James <laughs> stories, Chris. So Actually, I'm going to tell Pete a Chris Merchant story. Oh, uh, right, so we're going to yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna throw one out here for, and I, I'm not going to get anybody into trouble. Don't worry, Chris. But uh, right. this kind of speaks to the, that, that aspect of, um, you know, I was telling Pete before we kind of came on today that um, in, in university football, every week you have to nominate a athlete of the week. Uh, I was lucky uh, as the sports information guy at the time uh, that I was the one who had to kind of connect with the coach, get everything submitted. Um, for some reason, Merchant's name keeps coming up on a week to week basis, you know, 300 and some odd yards, a couple touchdowns, da da da. I'm trying to write this thing to the OUA to be like, look, this is easy for you. Your athlete of the week is right here on a plate, take it and run. Um, you know, some weeks, some weeks we got some, some weeks we didn't. Um, and uh, to, speaking to kind of Chris's character, the one day I get a message, I think it was on about a Tuesday or a Wednesday um, from Chris, and he said, uh, so you have to put those athlete of the week nominations in, right? Yeah. He goes, do me a favor. If, if my name comes up next week, put one of the O line in. <laughs> hey, and that reminds me of a story. I, I, I told you, Ryan, uh, a fellow named Claire Deer covered the uh, Mustangs uh, for the free press. And I was always there because I broadcast the games and we were asked to pick a player of the game once. And I looked at Chris and said, why not the whole O-line? They, they get little love, and yet exactly. they do all the work. You know, yeah. they do the, the, so much of it. And we did. We submitted it. And the guy who made the decision said, no, you can't do that. You got to pick one. I said, all right, the center. We'll pick yeah. the center. And, and it was deserved. It was well-deserved. Because these oh, kids uh, work uh, without without notoriety uh, all their entire playing lives. Exactly. Yeah. No, those guys are the guys that really get, get down and dirty, and they're the heart and soul of the football team. So yes, uh, without a good old line, again, uh, it's very hard to be successful. So I was lucky enough to play with a bunch of good old lines uh, at Western. Yeah. And uh, and again, like you said, they didn't always get the recognition they deserved uh, throughout the season. I mean, they they ended up. At the end of the year, a lot of them, when they deserved it, they got it. But uh, definitely during the season, I wanted to, again, it was so small and, and it was what it was at the time. I really, those those uh, Athlete of the Weeks were awesome. They made me feel good. But uh, 
I think they meant a little bit more to other people. So if it was an opportunity for me to do some little for my own line, again, I'm not, I can't, I can't be the one of the guys to go and buy Rolexes like those NFL players do, but uh, <laughs> Hopefully, it did a little bit of something for them. Too. They got they got a few free chicken fajitas at uh, Lone Star with the uh, with the gift cards Chris was getting on a week to week basis. So uh, he t- he took care of the boys that way. One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, uh, Chris, it's been my pleasure talking to you, son, and I hope you uh, have uh, unlimited success whether you stay in Europe or come back here. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Uh, it's been a pleasure as well, Pete and Ryan. Uh, I hope hopefully we'll talk soon and I wish you all the best uh, in this next little bit. I know it'll be tough with everything going on in Ontario, but I've um, already had my shot. I love to hear it. That's he, awesome. He, he, so, was, he was first in line. There you go. <laughs> I was up there. I was, there. <laughs> I've had, and yes, when I get my second shot, the 4th of oh. July. Hey, there we go. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully once all those come in, uh, I mean, once the once that the part of the population that's most at, most at risk, maybe things will really start to get uh, into motion, which will be great. I think I think that'll be awesome. So, merch, it's always good to see you, buddy. And uh, you know, I, I bug you all the time, and I appreciate the fact that you have, still haven't said no. And we're uh, we we love chatting, and uh, I look forward to seeing whatever this uh, this next step is, uh, one way or the other. Absolutely, and you know, I'll never say no. You're my guy, so. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll keep that uh, on loop just for if I do go back to that job at some point. The quarterback <laughs> has to get along with the sports information guy. So, yeah, uh, yeah, although you might, yeah, I might not be available with uh, the new opportunity. We'll see. We'll, we'll wait. We'll wait and see. You might not want to talk to me anymore. We'll see. Uh, I'll always want to talk to you. You're always on that wall with a heck Crichton and a Vanier, so that uh, don't doesn't matter where you go. I think you're purple and white, no matter what you do. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. Good talking to you, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.